Deep Purple und jetzt sind Candice Knight und Richie Blackmore bei uns im Studio. Welcome to the show. So Black Knight, I just, I was just saying before, it's one of those riffs that you never forget and one of those songs that you never forget, I think. What do you feel when you listen to these old songs by Deep Purple? Are you still very much in touch with this time or are you glad it's all over? Um, a little bit of both. Mm. <laughs> That summertime, that, that actual riff came from a, a song called Summertime by Ricky Nelson. Mm -hmm. The actual riff that goes, um, the part that uh, goes, um... That comes from somebody else. Uh -huh. So it's, um, it's not quite original, mm -hmm. but uh, we took it anyway. Nobody said anything. Mm -hmm. And it did quite well. Mm -hmm. But it's one, of those, um, it's one of those riffs that the, the audience sings along with. Yeah, also the smoke on the water riff, which is the only riff I can play on the guitar. Right. <laughs> it's interesting how they tell people when they go to music shops, do not play smoke on the water. Why? Because the, the people that work in the, the guitar shops have heard that riff so many times <laughs> and uh, they request that it not be played. Uh -huh. yeah. Also, ganz lustig. Um, Richie Blackmore sagt gerade, wenn man in einen Gitarrenladen geht, um, dann spielt wahrscheinlich jeder auf allen Gitarren immer zuerst dieses Riff von Smoke on the Water und es kann einfach niemand mehr hören. Deswegen sagen die Leute immer, bitte spielt das nicht. Aber dieses ganz berühmte Riff von uh, Black Knight ist tatsächlich um, nicht von ihm, sondern von Ricky Nelson. Aber damals haben sie es einfach benutzt und niemand hat was, was uh, darüber zu sagen gehabt. Und der Song ist ja auch sehr, sehr erfolgreich gewesen. Und einerseits um, hängt er noch an dieser Zeit, aber andererseits ist er auch froh, dass sie vorbei ist. Also es ist eine Art a uh, mission of Biden. But uh, the new project, Blackmore's Night, is that a reference to Black Knight or to your last name? It's actually the last names. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what to call it, but we thought we needed to have my name in there somewhere, although I thought twice about that even. Um, we were going to call ourselves the pre-minstrel band at first. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just a, a play on words. Um, but uh, of course, my name and her name, we mm -hmm. thought it might there's a, tr uh, a double kind of meaning, really. It's Blackmore's mm. Night plus it's two names. Yeah. That's the conjures up a lot of imagery. Mm. I think um, Richie's always been known as this dark persona. So, especially the cover of the album shows, it's sort of like the beginning of Blackmore's Night. This is, mm -hmm. this is what, where he lives in this nocturnal kind of creature coming out. Mm -hmm. So it's got both of them. Mm. And what about yourself? I mean, I mean, are you a kind of nocturnal too. person as Absolutely. well? Absolutely, <laughs> yes. I, I sleep later than he does. <laughs> but um, I think that's where we, we both get our creativity from. We, we draw more on the nighttime than we do the daytime. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Also, you guys are night people, obviously. Yes. We tend to go to bed at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning. Or, but then the, um, they, they wake us up sometimes at like 8 o'clock in the morning. The people are building a house next door to ours. Mm -hmm. So for the last six months, all we've been hearing is people banging and crash. It's difficult because you're coming across here, there's a six hour time change. Yeah. Sometimes Where do you live these days? We live in New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. So but not in the city. No. Okay. So we're still on that time change. Mm. Also, Sie haben noch ein bisschen Jetlag. Sie wohnen jetzt im, <coughs> im Moment in New York. Normalerweise gehen die beiden immer so gegen 4 Uhr morgens ins Bett. Candice sagte gerade, die meiste Kreativität ähm, hätte sie selbst auch nachts. Sie ist, äh, nachts. Sie ist auch ein Nachtmensch. Und Richie Blackmore wird ja sowieso, wurde sowieso immer eher so mit äh, düsteren Bildern äh, in Verbindung gebracht als mit hellem Tageslicht. Und das spiegelt diese Platte eben auch so ein bisschen wider. Also die, der Anfang von Blackmores Nacht. Also, äh, Die Zusammenstellung hat eigentlich nichts mit Black Knight zu tun, sondern mit den beiden äh, Familiennamen. Also Blackmore und Candice heißt mit Nachnamen Knight und diese Kombination ergibt dann eben äh, auch diese Platte. <coughs> uh, were you, how did you two meet? Were you two, were you a Deep Purple or Rainbow fan or anything? Or? Not a diehard fan. I, I heard the songs that were on the radio. Mm -hmm. and, um, I had gone to see them play about six months before I actually met Richie, mm -hmm. um, they were playing the Meadowlands with Aerosmith and, um, and Guns N' Roses. And I always say that when Guns N' Roses finished, Deep Purple was supposed to come on. And, and I went in the back and I sat down until Smoke on the Water came on, which is when everybody rushed up to yeah. the stage. But about six months, it must have been fate, because about six months after that, um, I went to work for a radio station on Long Island in New York, where I live. And uh, they had a soccer game that was going on. It was going to be the Deep Purple versus my radio station soccer game. Who won? So I went to go. Really? Of course, they really? did. <laughs> He's a great soccer player. No, not really. I, I had the team rigged. I had uh -huh. all my best friends that I are see. the best players in the area. <laughs> he always says that. <laughs> He's got great fancy football. So you worked at the radio station, and that's yes. how you met again. I um I went to cheer on my team. I had nothing to do with him. I wanted my team to beat his team. <laughs> and afterwards, um. 
I went to congratulate him on, on his team winning, and I asked him for an autograph, and he looked up at me with, with his English accent and said, you know, you're a very beautiful girl. And that would have been, that was my, my story. That would have been my Richie Blackmore story. I could have told my friends. Five-minute story, that's it. But um, he sent three of his roadies through the crowd to find out who I was and to make sure that I met him afterwards for a drink. And we wound up talking till about 6 o'clock in the morning, all night long. And then I had to go to school two hours later, so I was oh. a wreck that night. But, um, but we just, we clicked so well in every way, in, in the musical way, in spiritual way, in hobbies that we had, and, and just our frames of mind were clicked so perfectly that even a couple of weeks later, he went on tour. I would get postcards from all over the world, from Israel and Bangkok and all over the place. <laughs> and these phone calls are crazy hours. And one thing led to another, and... and yeah, we are eight Perfect years story. Later. Yeah. I have to translate it real quick. Oh, okay, <lacht> Also eine, eine ganz tolle äh, Geschichte. Man sollte sich ein Beispiel daran nehmen. Die beiden haben sich kennengelernt. Candice war auf einem Die Purple Konzert, wo die Purple zusammen mit Guns N' Roses und Aerosmith gespielt haben. Und ähm, dann hat sie Richie sechs Monate später wieder getroffen, weil er mit seiner Band und noch ein paar anderen gegen ihr ähm, Moment, also sie arbeitete bei einer Radiostation in New York und das Team der Radiostation hat gegen die Purple Fußball gespielt, Soccer. Und sie hat natürlich für äh, die Radiostationsjungs gecheert und geklatscht und wollte eigentlich gar nichts mit den anderen zu tun haben, aber hat ihn dann doch um ein Autogramm gebeten und so haben sie sich kennengelernt. Er hat sich von drei Roadies ausfindig machen lassen in der Menge und irgendwie haben sie dann sich die ganze Nacht unterhalten und ähm, ja, so ging das dann eben weiter. Okay, so now, ähm, voll und mystisch und auch ziemlich ruhig und schön klingend, Shadow of the Moon von Blackmore's Night. So is that... Um, Uh, your break from loud rock and roll. Yes, I think so. It's something that I've been playing for about 20 years, mm. but I've never put it on record. Not the actual record, but the actual type of music. Mm -hmm. And it was when I met Candy, I would often play this type of music around the house. And then she would join in singing, and that's how we started with it. Mm -hmm. I read somewhere that, um, that your father forced you to take classical um, guitar lessons when you were a kid. That's true. When Is I was that 11, your late revenge? <laughs> when I was about 11, when I, I had the guitar bought for me by my father, he said, if you don't learn this guitar properly, I'm going to put it across your head. So well, I kind of had to learn it, otherwise he would smash it over my head. Yeah, so you had to go through Bach and all this. I, I loved it. Well, it's but, great. Yeah. But I wasn't really good enough to play Bach. Mm -hmm. I tried to, mm -hmm. but um, it gave me a good foundation for the music that was to come. Yeah, yeah, that, that's really important, mm -hmm. I think. Also er hat ähm, als Elfjähriger von seinem Vater eine Gitarre bekommen und der hat ihm gesagt, wenn du jetzt äh, das nicht anständig lernst mit äh, klassischem Unterricht, dann hau ich das Ding über den Kopf. Und ähm, dann hat er das auch gemacht und hat auch Bach gespielt und solche Sachen. Und ist natürlich schwierig. Und er meint, er wäre nicht, äh, nicht gut genug gewesen, um das immer weiter zu spielen. Und so hat er dann irgendwann angefangen, Rock zu spielen. Und die Idee für diese Platte, die spukt im Prinzip seit über 20 Jahren in seinem Kopf herum. Er spielt auch diese Musik oft so vor sich hin, hat es aber noch nie auf Platte gebracht und als er dann eben Candy getroffen haben, haben die beiden dann äh, sich überlegt, dass sie daraus auch mal eine Platte machen können. But you've always had this, um, you've always been working a little bit in this classical field, haven't you? I mean, there's um, a time when even the Purple worked in that direction. That's right. In about 1970, I think 69, we did a couple of um, uh, concertos with the orchestras yeah. and things. Um, but that was really not my, um, not what I wanted to play. I wanted to play rock and roll. That was something that John Lord yeah. wanted to do, but mm. we did it. It was more of a novel publicity thing. Yeah. And um, this is kind of different. This is, it's the difference between classical music and Renaissance music. Yeah. We're, we're taking from the 1600s more, like four of the tracks that are, are on this CD are from that period, the 1500s, Tillman Sassato, which is the clock ticks on and play minstrel play, Renaissance fair. Mm -hmm. Um, and really we're trying to bring that to the attention of the people. Um, there are a lot of purists out there playing this music, but there hasn't been this crossover. And we're trying to make a bit of a crossover mm -hmm. to making a, a pop ballad kind of Renaissance music. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, there's no label for it yet. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there will be. Oh, soon. There's a label for everything. <laughs> <laughs> also mit Sicherheit wird es bald auch eine Schublade geben, in, wo man das reinpacken kann. Er sagt gerade, bisher gibt es wohl noch keine. Äh, auf dieser Platte wird hauptsächlich Musik aus der Renaissance äh, als Anregung verwendet. Also vier der Stücke sind halt so 16, 1500 so und so im Grunde genommen geschrieben worden. Ähm, zum Beispiel Min Minstrel Play und so weiter. Das ist ein Stück, wo äh, Ian Anderson auch mit drauf spielt. Ian Anderson? Mm -hmm. That's right. He, um, we asked Ian to play on Play Minstrel Play because um, 
we wanted him to uh, we didn't know if he would want to play or not so we asked him to play on that one track mm -hmm. and he said yes so we were really excited mm -hmm. and then we heard later that he told a few friends that he was a little bit disappointed because he didn't play on more tracks oh. so we would I oh. saw him two days ago and I said if I had known you were interested I would have put you on the whole thing yeah classical <laughs> misunderstanding as Richie Blackmore hat vorher gedacht, okay, dann tun wir ihn jetzt auf ein Stück und dann sind wir ganz dankbar. Und dann hat er eben auf einem Stück gespielt, aber hinterher kam dann raus, er hätte auch gerne noch auf den anderen mitgespielt. Das ist schade, dass er es nicht gemacht hat, aber naja, die Platte ist ja auch so ganz gut geworden. Also sie wollten im Grunde genommen so eine Pop-Verschmelzung von Popmusik, Balladen mit ähm, Musik aus dem 16. Jahrhundert mit dieser Platte so erreichen. Um, there was one other question that, question that I wanted to put you about the riffs. Um, hmm. People always say that you are one of the most, um, of the best riff guitar uh, players in the world. Like you invented some of the most, um, most interesting riffs, mm -hmm. riffs that you can't get out of your head. Uh, is it very difficult for you today to invent new things? Because when you started doing that, everything was very new. I mean, rock and roll history wasn't that long. And no. riffs like the smoke on the water riff were really new to our ears. And these days, it's like you have heard everything everywhere before. I mean, very true. Although I still play that, that hard rock music that I play, I don't think is really played that much by bands anymore. Mm -hmm. We're into alternative and pop. So it is relatively easy to come up with new riffs mm -hmm. whether people want to play them or for them to be on the radio that's the hard part not mm -hmm. the actual writing it's getting that, that as they say product played on the the radio mm -hmm. because sometimes it can be thought of as, a, as an old-fashioned kind of way of playing but I, I I kind of don't believe in fashions I believe in just playing what I play Mhm. Also ihm fällt es immer noch nicht schwer, gute Riffs zu schreiben. Äh, ich habe gerade danach gefragt, man hat ja heutzutage immer das Gefühl, alles wäre schon erfunden worden und schon gemacht worden. Und damals, als die Purple angefangen haben und eben diese legendären Riffs er äh, komponiert hat, da gab es eben noch nicht alles. Und er sagt, ähm, äh, es wird so wie Sie damals Gitarre gespielt haben, spielen die meisten Bands heutzutage gar nicht mehr Gitarre, wenn man das teilweise heute als altmodisch empfindet. Und es gibt halt viel so Alternative Musik und das ist eben schon was anderes. Aber er schafft das immer noch im Prinzip genauso wie vorher. But I have to ask you this one last question no, everybody wants uh, I, 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 I won't answer <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, will there ever be another deep purple reunion with you on the guitar that's yes when well, i'm about a hundred a hundred mm -hmm. which is about five years away okay. <laughs> <laughs> also in fünf jahren sagt er mir gerade wenn er dann 100 ist um, mm. das lassen wir jetzt mal so stehen wird es dann vielleicht noch mal eine deep purple reunion geben well thank you very much for coming to the studio thank and you lying to me okay <laughs> Are we going to see you on stage with that sometime? Oh yes, we'll be doing a, a short castle tour, probably in August. A castle tour? Castle tour. We're going to play various castles throughout Germany. Oh. And we, we have, have a small band, which is five people. Yeah. And we'll be playing um, all the castles. Mm -hmm. And because we often stay when we're on holiday here, we stay at castles. So we know all the castles that we're going to play. We're just playing mm -hmm. the banqueting halls. Neuschwanstein and stuff. And no, not Neuschwanstein. It would be places like Hagelock, Valdeck, Wartburg. Very nice. That's a nice way to spend the summer. Also im August gehen sie auf Tour mit einer fünfköpfigen Besetzung und werden diese Platte vorstellen. Und zwar wird es eine Tour über die Schlösser sein. Also auch gleich richtig angenehm, weil sie immer, wenn sie in Deutschland sind, gerne in Schlössern wohnen. Nicht so ganz große wie Neuschwanstein, aber eben sehr schöne. Und da werden sie dann diese Platte spielen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.